Hey guys, it's Illusory Pixel here. I'm going to do a video tutorial and a step-by-step -step guide on one of the portraits I did recently. Um, I haven't done a video for a long time, so I'm a bit rusty, so bear with me. Uh, so yeah, this is the portrait that I did. Uh, it was originally based on um, one of Sakimi-chan's portraits. Uh, she did a portrait tutorial. I think it was called... Uh, portrait 101 volume 2 or something and basically she does this and this is the final work that she does and this is my final version of it <clears throat> so as you can see two very different outcomes at the end although it's obviously inspired by her work same hairstyle same character pretty much similar things but that completely different um, output end result so this is mine on the left and this is hers on the right and as you can see the differences so basically I had a user contact me on reddit and they were asking for help with um, their work like hey I like your artwork it's amazing can you say which technique you use for coloring not your artwork I think you use digital painting can you give me guidance for coloring your artwork um, artwork so I thought I'll just make a video tutorial so I could share it with everyone if anyone's interested um, so yeah uh, what do I want to talk about okay yep so I submitted the artwork to reddit and I got like 285 likes here in digital art and these other ones then the groups are not so popular so they didn't get much traction there but uh, 120 likes in digital painting and 95 likes in fan art uh, not bad uh, not viral or anything like that but not bad for one of my first posts um, I also got some likes on Facebook on level up I got 156 57 likes on level up I got mm, 49 likes on digital painting worldwide artists and that was the only groups I submitted I didn't want to spam too many groups with the same artwork although I know that it's good to uh, showcase your work as much as you can but I just got bored after a while so um, so that's the Reddit and Facebook part of things. So one of the things I want to talk about is when I was doing my portrait um, in comparison to Sakimi Chan's, I wasn't trying to copy exactly the same as hers. I had my own design choices and variances so that end results look different, as you can see between the two. And this is just me picking my own preferences sometimes in comparison to what she was doing. So like with the head construction is different on mine compared to hers like uh, I think her neck is a bit longer th that they do in anime style her head is more uh, chiseled around here chiseled uh, thinner while mine's more round and solid I guess um, but as you can see like even with mine there's a bit of I think anatomy problems like for example the the amount of top of the head that we show on hers as well would imply that the character is facing a little downwards that's why you see more of the top of her head and the ears would naturally go higher but I feel like I did I did the head looking kind of down so you can see the top part of the top portion of the head more but the face I kind of still drew straight on which kind of makes gives it a bit of a weird vibe um, and one of the critiques I got was from a user on reddit and they were saying this was their draw paint over they were saying like uh the eyes are too far down you have to you know raise the eyes up or something make the nose bigger they made they changed the color saying that it's more it needs to be more cartoonish i think stylized to look like sakimi chan's work and they made the eyes bigger but in all honesty i don't I prefer my own uh, preferences and design choices that I made like to me this looks a bit unrealistic 
the eyes are too big for my liking. I know that for anime styles and uh, stuff, they make the eyes big. The colors are way oversaturated. I was even thinking mine is a bit oversaturated as well, but I kind of just, I just liked it. I just liked the way it was, uh, I felt the painting was, the feelings of painting was giving the colors. I just liked the vibes, uh, the, the glow effect and the purple and pink across, uh, against the black background. Uh, I was liking it. Here's the uh, original. So yeah, I mean, you know, everybody has their own styles and preferences. Um, I just prefer mine over this. And and as, as I said, it was I wasn't trying to do a direct copy of hers. I was trying to make it my own, stylized in my own way, preferences. So that was one of the critiques. There were some very valid critiques. Um, someone said the ears are not detailed enough. Yep, that's true. I did not spend that much time on the ears. I kind of just wanted to get it over and done with with the ears. So I could have spent more on the ears and gave more love to the ears. Uh, someone was saying that the the glow, the white glow and the highlights on the lips were not realistic enough because like this one here, I kind of just did it because I think Sakimi chan also did a uh, glow here. So I just kind of like was in that mental mindset where I just like did what I saw and I just did it. But like someone said there would be a, uh, a shadow occlusion, shadow ambient occlusion shadow there on the lips, which is also a valid critique. Uh, that was it. I think my, that was the main points that people were saying. Uh, other than that, like I said, the head, the construction of the head, uh, I already critiqued myself. That could be improved, but overall I was very happy with it. Uh, the overall end results, it was a worthy, uh, artwork. <clears throat> Although not completely original. Uh, Okay, so let's go into the tutorial. <sighs> okay, so this is step by steps. And sorry, guys, I didn't record the actual process of making it because I didn't want a video capture running in the background. So, but I did save each stage. So I have all the information here to show you guys uh, how to do it step by step um, so basically you just block it in first like this this is the first stage where you're just blocking in um, with some sort of skin color that you like uh, really with the heads um, it's too it's too much to talk about in one video the head construction it's there's like so many video tutorials on just the head constructing the head um, my recommendations is guys do your, uh, Loomis heads, practice your Loomis heads, practice, do, you know, watch some tutorials on Loomis heads, practice your Loomis heads, practice your Asaro heads, simplified Asaro heads, complicated Asaro heads, practice your skulls, uh, the human skull in different angles for all of these, you do different angles. Um, you do the right, the abstract Riley head. Uh, practice human heads, you know, from references and still, you have to get good at constructing the head. Um, there's no other, uh, if you're completely a beginner, there's no other way. You can't do this without knowing how to construct the head. Um, I mean, it's easier when you have a reference and you copy, uh, somebody else's reference, but to really be able to draw the head in any angle, you have to practice it. Like I said, the uh, Asaro head, the uh, Riley abstract head, the skull, the Loomis head. You and these are this is a big subject. You can't I, I can't explain it in like two minutes here. But you just have to practice it. Um, I can show. Uh, I can show you examples if I can find it. So here's some Loomis head uh, practices that I did. Uh, this is just some of them, uh, basically Loomis heads, just practicing different angles from different tutorials and different courses. Um, then you go on to, you know, uh, 
could do skull practices. There's these skull practices here. Uh, you know, just keep practicing, doing different ones, different angles. Use references. Um, more skulls here. Uh, move on to simple sorrow heads. These are the sorrow heads practices that I do. Um, just, you know, keep practicing. It takes a long time to memorize these things. And if you don't do it for a while, like if I, if I don't do this for a month or two, a few months, I forget everything that I did. So I'll have to go back and do it again just to remember. So it is a big subject on its own. Like it's not, you know, getting really good at heads or memorizing heads is quite a big subject. Um, abstraction. Abstract. Uh, this is the Riley. Riley head method. Um, just, you know, again, just loads of different versions, practices. Uh, here's one where I tried to make it look like Chun Li. So, yeah, just use your references. Um, what else? <clears throat> and this is all just for the construction of the head, guys. It's not the facial features it's just for you to understand the head in 3d space so you can construct it without it looking weird so yeah this is also more practice and this is the complicated sorrow head or the regular sorrow head and it has so much details in it i don't even remember this like i did i did these drawings and i don't remember any of the information there's just too much information to memorize so i'll have to go back and practice it again and that's it really for the heads you just have to practice all these different methods you have to use constructions structure understand the forms in 3d uh there's no other real way to go about doing it so once you do that you go on to stage two here where we start adding some color we use you know pink for the hair we add some shading uh very rough work and we start using the lasso tool the lasso lasso tool and basically what this does is like the way you do it is you just do the shapes that you want and then you delete okay i'm not on the layer but So if you want these nice sharp edges on the hair or the shapes that you want, you basically cut it the way you want, like this. And it just cuts it out nice and smooth, almost like when you're making a gingerbread man from flour and then you just use the uh, whatever tool to cut out the shape of the ginger man. And you get it perfectly good shape out of it strong shapes so that's this tool here the lasso tool okay and moving on here we add some we try to bring out the 3d form so we're adding uh, some ambient occlusion around where uh, the receding parts are like uh, the, the head that's going behind her neck and ears so the way you do this is you just basically choose your lasso tool area and then you pick your brush and then you get pick a uh, dark color and I think I'm not on a layer again and you can add it to multiply 
but for some reason it's not working for me because I don't think I'm on the right layer. <clears throat> okay, yeah. So that it's working. You can also press Control H on your keyboard, which hides the lesser to selection area, which makes it so much easier to see what you're doing. So you get your um, soft brush and you just darken it up the areas that you want where there would be ambient occlusion uh, sh shadow shading you just want to do that and that will pop up the forms more uh, making it more 3D and here we do the same thing um, but more on the hairs the strands of the hairs around the ears we added the face just a rough mark of the face it's a very rough drawing at this stage it kind of looks kind of manly um, started making the shapes of uh, the hair the, this is quite easy you just um, have to shade in a way where you use the lasso tool and then you also just like shade around the air areas where it would be sinking in going into the hair itself and then brightening up the areas that would be standing out and hitting more the planes will be hitting more of the light <clears throat> here just adding more details not much else this has been there uh, just added the whites of the eye let's go down here so this is next just adding some details onto the hair and basically guys for this drawing I just use two brushes the soft brush the soft brush is the one with the soft edges around it's just like a, it's like an airbrush it has this uh, when you paint it has it doesn't have a strong outline it just uh, blends and fades in and then I have a hard brush with some blending uh, properties so if you if you look at the brush it has some <clears throat> so it's a hardness is at 100% spacing 25% and yeah I, it's just a regular brush uh, with some uh, settings opacity settings uh, I think they were included in Sakimi Chan's um, brushes as well when you buy her uh, tutorials but the thing is they're basic brushes that you can make them easily in a few seconds and if you don't you, you don't need to get it from her it's just basic settings if you don't know how to do basic uh, brush settings it's quite easy if you just learn how to do that um, and that's the only two brushes I used in this whole thing and like for the hair here you just get one of these brushes and you just blend in you just blend in like this you can make the brush smaller to get like some exaggerated thin lines and you just vary the, the brush sizes and then you just alt tab pick the dark, darker red and then go back over it picking so I'm just using the what do you call it the eyedropper tool to select the red and go back to the brush tool just paint it back like this and you just keep doing this over and over until you get like the effect you desire and you know you will naturally build your talent <coughs> to render some hair um, but again understanding hair is a whole different topic you need to understand volumes of the hair construction it's uh, too much to talk about in this tutorial itself so these are very specific areas that you can uh, go on to learn about a lot so here just adding more details adding more um, details to the hair giving a hairline uh, using the lasso tool that we talked about earlier to just darken up these edges to get make the hair pop up uh, more so it looks like her the hair is over her face and it's creating a shadow uh, just started detailing the hair more changing colors um, here just rendering more adding more thin strokes now here like you can see we're getting a bit more serious with the rendering 
uh, the detail using a small brush over the large shapes and just adding the small details it just adds once you do the big shapes and then you add the little shapes on top it just starts looking good like at this stage i was already enjoying my um work like in the early stages you're just painting and you're like damn it looks terrible what am i doing it's horrible but once things start coming together it starts to you start to appreciate it more here i'm just adding more color more details uh, the different hair strands, the whites in her hair strands. I've added blush to her face very roughly. Don't know how I wanted that to look at the moment. Eye color. We started rendering her eyes. <clears throat> started rendering her lips and stuff. Still very rough on the face. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry if you can hear the neighbor shouting, I can't really stop that. Uh, more detail, at this stage it's just more details, adding more details. Is here I started playing with the constructs of the head, it's starting to look a bit weird. Um, added these little flicks of hair, you just, get, you just get a thin brush and you just do little flicks in a natural rhythm that makes sense to the hair here I started playing around um, with a face liquify tool just giving her a smile you know the liquify tool is really good you can oh I'm on the wrong layer again <clears throat> you could am I under with the liquefier tool, you could change her smile. You could use this to increase the lips. You can bring down the nose. You could do whatever you want. Um, you have to be careful with it. I end up every time I use it, I end up undoing what I did because it's very easy to make the face look very unnatural like if i just do that you see it's wrong it just looks awkward it looks bad if if you don't notice these mistakes it looks really amateurish like someone might upload a work where the eyes are not nicely symmetrical or you know yeah you could have a little bit of it's, people say that you your face is not 100% symmetrical which is true but also they say that the more symmetrical your face is the more beautiful someone is so if their eye, eyes are pretty much lined up it looks better than if your eye was deformed or your face was a little deformed then you're like that it just looks really awkward because your brain is very good at recognizing faces if this was on an animal like a bird or something or a pigeon or like a cat you wouldn't notice the difference as much as you can with a human being with human being any little deformation on the face you can pretty much tell straight away if i do her nose wonky and i think a lot of um amateur artists or beginner artists um make these mistakes i still make these mistakes it's really annoying and when you flip your image or you come and look at your image a few days later it looks bad because you had you don't construct your face very well so you need to be careful with that. <clears throat> oh, and another t um, thing I'll just quickly bring It's kind of going too much into it, but you could, if you have one of the latest versions of Photoshop, I, I don't know which version it was. I think it was like after 2018 or something. Um, they had this uh, face recognizer. So you could do, um, basically it recognizes the face of your character and then you could use the presets like the distance of the eyes how much do you want to bring it close it's really good if you want to just make small differences small changes smile see just all these um I, I really like it it's just like just helps a lot when you just want to make small changes although like i said it's very easy to go wrong and start making your pictures look bad and that's what happens to me i always get carried away I start using liquify tools and then it goes horribly wrong and I can show you an example of this of how horrible 
how wrong it could go. Um, here is my Chun Li head, and here's me using the tools that I just showed you, the liquify tools and the presets. And like right now, you might say, "Oh, okay, that's a little better," or you know, maybe you don't prefer her eyes. I, I just like the fact that she's squinting, squinting a little bit. And then what happened here? It's like getting a bit messy, getting a bit messy, adding stuff to try to fix it. But the, I've deformed the head so much at this point because of the liquid tool. And then and you get used to it, so you don't even realize that what you're doing until you come out and you look at it like I did. And you're like, holy hell. Like it was so much better in the beginning. And what have I done to it by the end stages? So yeah, the liquify tool, you need to be very careful with it. You can get easily carried away. Um, here, just adding more renders, eyelashes. Uh, started adding the, the lips, the gloss details. Just small details, guys. You just zoom in and you just get like light colors. And I'm not on the right layer again. <clears throat> and you just... just add in the highlights and just work on it slowly and slowly. I added this uh, white outglow. Uh, I think Sakimi Chan did it as well and I really liked it. And someone critiqued saying that it's not realistic that you don't get that kind of glow. And yeah, I know, but I, when I added it, I really liked it. It was just adding something to the painting and it made her lips look nice and glowy and juicy so I just decided to keep it here I was trying to replicate Sakimi Chan's structure of the head I started making her chins thinner and <clears throat> trying to change her the shape of her head and I liked it it was a different version but it just didn't feel right to me so um, it was more like yeah you know, in anime styles you have long necks you have these weird heads and stuff and yeah it's a stylized but i think a lot of beginners get carried away with that stylization and they do too much of a round head too much of a long head too much of a long neck you have to use it in a way to make your character look more beautiful but you have to balance it out with making it look realistic otherwise it just doesn't look right it looks ugly i see so many stylized enemies that don't look good and even if it's like professional work I just don't like the style where it's too exaggerated it's almost like a caricature where they've exaggerated something so much that it's lost its appeal like there's no point of having um, you know long legs gives beauty to your characters and they do it a lot in anime they give the late the girls longer legs but if you exaggerate way too much it just looks like fucking slender man or something I don't know just some giant beanstalk or something it just doesn't look right <clears throat> so here we add the gold uh rings and braids i don't, I don't know what you call it Ugh, i'm not a woman so i don't know these accessories and stuff um yeah just adding them adding the detail just i was getting all my inspiration uh, ideas from Sakimi Chan obviously because I was looking at her portrait and I was like yeah that looks cool I want to do that the hair um, putting lines into the hair uh, going more forward just at this stage it's mainly <clears throat> just playing with skin color blending in stuff uh, making you know, highlighting the right areas like here, getting your uh, dodge tool, and I'm not on the right layer again. <clears throat> so you just like highlight the right areas that you think light's gonna hit, and then you darken <clears throat> the areas where you want it to be more dark. <coughs> You have to, you gain this with knowledge, guys. Uh, you just, from references, from doing loads of heads, you start to understand where to do it. Or you can use a reference. Like my reference was, again, Sagimi Chan's artwork. So I was uh, doing most of her things. And the thing is, because I'm using her as a reference, her mistakes become my mistakes. Because if she's done something wrong, 
I end up copying it and I do something wrong. Like the lip gloss thing that I got critiqued on here. Uh, this wasn't realistic. It wouldn't be highlighted here. It would be actually be more dark around here because the, um, the lip is going into the mouth. So as the planes turn away from the environment and back into the mouth, it will get darker and that's how you get ambient occlusion. But I saw her do it and I copied her and her mistake became my mistake. And that's one of the things you need to be careful with because when you're copy when you're working off someone like Sakimi Chan or any other artist, uh, if her anatomy is off and a lot of people say that her anatomy is off sometimes I personally see it in some of her work and some of her work is fine. So it, it's just um, when she does something incorrectly and you're using her as a reference, you're very likely to make that same mistake. And the thing is, the more you do it, the more you memorize that mistake, the more you ingrain that mistake and the more it's harder it is to get rid of that mistake if you don't correct it. Because the more you practice something, the more natural it's going to be for you and the less likely you're going to fix it. So it's always good to do your head constructions, your <clears throat> anatomy, your skulls, your yeah human body anatomy and stuff. It's always good to go back to <clears throat> the correct stuff, the correct material and study it where you know that everything is anatomically correct because it's from a picture or a verified, you know, like a scientific diagram or whatever. I don't know what you call it, anatomy, anatomy diagram. Or, and you just do the correct um, anatomy for your characters and the proportions and stuff. It's always good to um, do that. For this purpose, I was really just going for the rendering. I was really going for the whole Sakimi Chan vibe. I just wanted to do the same style as her. Uh, so I kind of didn't care so much about the correctness of things. But as you can see, my head is still more in line with the Loomis head rather than Sakimi Chan's head. Um, the structure of my head is more, more to the material that I studied than say to Sakimi Chan's head, which is, it feels way more anime-ish, like stylish. Uh, it's not something you would see in a realistic head. And my one's not perfect either, but I would say it's more closer to being a realistic head than hers is. And I don't, I'm not saying she was trying to, I don't think she was trying to be realistic. In fact, she paints so fast that I think that's not her goal at all. I don't think she was, when she paints so fast, I don't think she's actually um, caring so much for being anatomically correct. Um, so we add, we add here the freckles, um, fr uh, freckles on her head and we just keep playing around, adding details, getting the colors right, color balance. Stages, it's very important to use um, the color changes like color balance and hue saturation. For example, you select um, whatever you have. Um, if the colors aren't working for you, you can play around with it. You could try different colors. Some of these are look quite amazing. Like this looks like a night elf now, uh, like from World of Warcraft or something. It just gives me the night elf vibe colors. Um, and you just play around with the color settings and the hue get whatever you want, whatever color is pleasing to you. And then you can play with the saturation, which means that you, you're deducting color out of it until it's black and white and or you're adding a lot of color to it. So whatever your style, um, you like, I personally don't like oversaturation it looks bad. I think all the time it's just overkill. Even if it's your style is just, just, I, I wouldn't, I don't like this, but, um, Anything between like quite colorful, like from this point on to anything like with less color works, even black and white works. But if you want a black and white picture, uh, black and white is very good to see if your uh, values are working, your um, 
shading values so if your black and white looks good you know that um, your values are correct uh, I won't go into that here because again this is another subject uh, values studies is a subject on its own and too too much for the scope of this video um, but yeah you can play with the colors this is lightness and darkness overall lightness and darkness I don't really use lightness and darkness because it just it's very uh, linear in what it does it's like it just darkens the whole picture or lightens the whole thing um, I don't really use it that much and I prefer to use these settings here brightness contrast settings this is a way better um, control of brightness and contrast than the other one uh, levels is also good like again levels is another subject on its own but <clears throat> it basically shows you uh, how much of the balance it is so sometimes it will show you it, in some images it'll show you like this area here is empty and then it goes up it'll show you that you don't have enough um, dark values so you can bring it in to balance it out but this looks rather balanced out right now um, so this basically when you move this slider it just makes all the white areas brighter areas brighter and this makes all the darker areas darker and this graph shows you which um, how much of each brightness you have the level so it will show you that these this darkness is the amount you have here um, yeah I just butchered that explanation I, can't, I haven't like studied it right now to explain it to you um, specifically but I mean if I just do my research I could explain it properly but for now just you know this you get a general gist of it so when you move this middle slider it basically just moves the middle values to more brighter or more darker uh, overall control this does the same thing as the hue saturation ring where it just either darkens it or something <clears throat> color balance this is really good if you want to do specific color changes like you only have a little bit of control over the hue saturation but with this you can control your midtones and then you can just control one set of colors so you could just say like um, more reds or more cyan that looks cool actually looks kind of like a left for dead poster or something <clears throat> and then you got this green so it basically is just showing you would you want more green in your picture or magenta or yellow or blue and uh, this midtone so if you go to highlights it means that it'll only control the brightest areas in your picture so because my picture is quite bright it's mainly everything that is getting controlled but it's <clears throat> but if you do just shadows again because my picture is quite balanced it's it's controlling everything but <clears throat> normally what would happen is like if you pick shadows only the darkest areas would be adjusted so uh, the darkest areas like here would turn blue so you can make the shades shaded areas more blue the darkest areas more blue to imply that it's nighttime and then you can go to highlights and then add yellow which would imply that the Sun is hitting the lightest parts of the face and it's creating that color on the bright spots if that's what you were going for because I've seen a lot of artists for example would go into shadows and add a little bit of blue into their shadows just to um, make the shade give it more of that nighttime feel where it's like at nighttime it's dark and it's bluish and or that cold feeling and then sometimes in the highlights they would add the sunlight so wherever the bright spots are they want the sunlight to hit but you could use this in any way you want you could just keep playing with it until you like it it's, it actually makes color choosing really easy because you just you could just stand you could just sit here and just change sliders until you really like something which means that if you messed up your colors in the beginning it doesn't really matter because you can fix it and that's the power of Photoshop because if you do this traditionally you're screwed you, you can't you'll have to repaint you'll have to add more paint and so it's really important when you're tr when you're doing traditional work that you get your colors right 
right off the bat what you're going for. That's why they do little um, value studies when they before they do a portrait. They do little value studies of what they want their values to look like. They do little uh, color palettes to, to see what they want their painting to look like. Because if they mess up the final painting, they can't just go in and be like, "Oh yeah, I'll just change my painting to whatever color I want." They'll actually have to repaint it so they do little thumbnails of value studies and little palettes of uh, color palettes and stuff to see what works and then they could do like multiple ones so they could do five little thumbnails of different colors and then they'll pick which color they like and they'll replicate it for the final painting with us we, we could just go we could just wing our colors and then come in here later and be like no uh that doesn't look good so I'll change it and then you have a completely different color than what you started off with and I think that I did that here uh, in where it was more red I started off with red and I liked it but then I thought hmm, you know I prefer the pink and white that Sakimi chan had going on so I tried to copy her colors more and overall I think the pink and white worked out better than the red and white um, just looks more feminine more girly younger while the red looks more like i don't know but this kind of reminds me of that uh x-men character is it jane i'm not sure uh let's see jane x-men is it jane doesn't she have I don't know, there was like an X-Men character that had like a patch of white hair, I think. Uh, no, it wasn't Jane, it was the other one. What was her name? I forgot. Uh, I think it was this one. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't really look like her either, so. Nah, it doesn't look like her. I thought it looked like her for some reason. Bad memory, never mind. Here, at the very end, I add. I add the, uh, what do you call it? Color dodge, soft light, <clears throat> the final bits, just to make it pop up more. Um, also use uh, the techniques of many illustrators like Sekimi Chan and Ross Draws and other people use is they uh, go into the color channels and they move the color channels a little bit to give it a little bit of a blur and then they put the uh, copy and paste it onto a new layer and they erase the parts that they want to keep sharp and then they keep the bits where it uh, they want to keep blurry. It just adds this like cinematic poster like look and I've seen so many artists use it in their renderings. You could also use sharpen filters at this point. Um, I did some sharpen filters but then I erased some parts to make it uh, blurry again in some parts. So that's why some of the pictures. And this was this was the final picture but as you can see my very final one, this was the very final one afterwards. I worked a little bit more. I changed her eyes and eyebrows a little bit. I just, it was, it was not clean on the first one here. You see, it's very rough. I didn't clean it up. Her eyes don't look so good. I mean, it's, it's a bit wonky. This one doesn't even look anatomically correct. It looks a bit weird, but I mean, it, it still looks okay to your eyes because like I said, it's, if it's not a big, uh, big obvious difference you, your your brain will accept it and it, your eyes wouldn't notice that there's something wrong with it but if I started making a big if it was off by quite a bit your eyes would your brain would notice it straight away see that little bit of difference I only moved it a little bit but it makes a big difference <clears throat> So yeah, I just cleaned up the final eyes, made it a lot cleaner. Again, I messed it up here where I cut it and forgot to blend it in again, but I just basically just made it way more cleaner. Like it's a lot more cleaner than what you just saw. And also I ended up giving her less makeup. Here she has more eyeshadow. She looks more like smoke. Her eyes are more smoky. And here she just looks more 
plain, bland, uh, I don't know, like um, less makeup, more, uh, what do you call it, balanced makeup where they don't over exaggerate it, they just add a little bit of my makeup, eyelashes, uh, mascara, just a little bit, just to give that na natural looking beauty kind of thing. And a lot of people have said, I think three or four people have said that it looks like Emma Watson, uh, the actress. and. Someone even said it looks like an elven version of Emma Watson and once, you know, once I saw it, um, I know who Emma Watson is, I know she's in Harry Potter, but I don't remember what she looks like, so I went back to look at what she looks like and yeah, I kind of see some similarities, so... Yeah, there is some similarities. Just, it's a purely coincidental thing. I didn't use Emma Watson as a reference at all. Uh, but yeah, I could see the, some similarities. I think it's the face and the structure of her head. So, yeah, that's it, guys. I think, let's go back. <clears throat> Yep, that's pretty much it. I know it was just a step-by-step -step process and not a full video, and but I tried to describe it as much as I can, uh, commentate on it, uh, audio commentary over it, and I explained the major parts. And yeah, I mean, to do, like I said, to get good at heads, to know how to how things look, how shading works, how light and shadow works. Uh, you need to learn heads, you need to learn all these details that I can't explain in one tutorial. This is more like a rendering tutorial, like what I did uh, following Sakimi Chan's tutorial. Um, her tutorial was good. Um, she doesn't narrate much on why things are the way they are. For example, Proko would teach you why things are the way they are, the structure, and why, you know, what you need to do about it, and to understand it. So Kimi chan is more like, I'm just gonna paint and follow along with me kind of thing, and she will just tell you what tool she's using, and I kind of did that here because it's a rendering tutorial and it's not uh, a construction tutorial, but I did tell you how you can go about learning that, and there's a lot of resources out there you can go and watch, and I think that's about it. <clears throat> I will post other work. I've got stuff that I'm working on that I've just like discontinued. This is like Chun Li that I just got bored of. Um, I just get sometimes I just get frustrated with working on things and not liking it. Uh, I mean, I do really like this. I'll probably go back and finish it, but it's just it looked a bit stiff the posture. So I might crop it, something like this. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of things that I started and I didn't finish, like this. This is from Dr. Stone, Kohaku, or whatever, however you pronounce the name, I can't remember off the top of my head. <clears throat> what I was the... <clears throat> this was another uh, painting I did of uh, Sakimi Chan's uh, reference. This on the right was the original reference that Sakimi Chan did. The left is my own interpretation. Same thing again, like what I did, I just did my own, uh, copied her techniques and chose my own design choices so again inspired by her but redone completely from scratch and with my own design choices so it's two different images uh but of the same character in the same angle in the same style so um just trying to practice how to render like her but adding my own twist to it uh yeah so i think that's it for 
this tutorial guys and I hope you guys learned something and hopefully I can get better at making video tutorials and if you follow me on YouTube um, I could probably put more work up in the future where I can improve on how I talk about these things. I'm a bit rusty like I said I haven't done a video in such a long time. Uh, my voice is crackling it's not even coming out properly properly because of <clears throat> but yeah so uh, my YouTube account is illusory pixel uh, YouTube slash forward slash illusory pixel yeah I used to make gaming videos uh, under that gamer though and I stopped because uh, it was a very uh, competitive saturated market and I really didn't think I was gonna go anywhere with that and I actually uh, wanted to develop a skill. I read a book called uh, Mastery by George Leonard and it's about uh, this guy, uh, he does like karate or jujitsu or something and um, basically he's trying to get good at something. It's the journey of mastery where um, you're reinvesting in something for years to build up a skill and I was uh, thinking that with my art I could do something like that. I could invest in a skill a lifelong skill while with video gaming it's like no you you're not really developing your skill with anything and uh you can get good at one video game and sooner or later it'll be dead and everyone will move on so you'll have to get pro at a different game and the only thing you might be getting good at is making multimedia videos and stuff but i just don't see that as like a, a it's not a mastery skill set it's not something that you build on for years um, unless you, you just specifically want to be like a video producer cinematics or director then yeah sure then that's fine but I'm talking about like just basic social media um, YouTube videos Twitch that's not really a life goal journey to invest in so I kind of moved on to my art stuff that I want to do. Uh, I also do 3D digital design and uh, kind of moving away from that now to more 2D stuff. I really want to do uh, my own characters and fan art and stuff and I like engaging with people so um, I like posting something that people appreciate and want to look at rather than um, uh, doing something a piece of artwork that no one's interested in so uh, just trying to get more uh, engagement with audiences so I feel like people appreciate the work that you output um, that's about it guys and I think the last thing I want to end on is um, yeah so come follow me on that uh, not that game at all uh, illusory pixel uh, subscribe to me I'll probably make more videos in the future and uh, come and I just made a um, Instagram account it's I've been using it for like one or two days I don't have any followers pretty much but this is where I'll post my future work so if you can come and follow me and support me on there as well that would be great and yeah that's it guys so that's illusory pixel instagram.com forward slash illusory pixel and i hope this video was useful you learned something from it and i hope to do better videos in the future so good luck have a nice day and work hard on your artwork